I know I'm gonna butcher this. This is why they put it on the video, but it just looks like from. You have the Rome, you have an F in the beginning, from. But I'm sure there's some weird, uh, weird dialect for this. Ha 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 ha! Wrong, it's not from. F R O M E, it should be blitheringly obvious, is pronounced from. Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to be watching and reacting to why are British place names so hard to pronounce? So I just recently did a video on, it was going through the, the 48 counties of specifically England and their names, which even the British person talking on the video messed up quite a few of the names and luckily people in the comments were correcting them. So that was a fun one to react to, but yeah, they are kind of tricky. I guess anywhere you go, they'll have kind of their own spin on words and, and the rules and everything. So, and so, some, some are just crazy to even try to pronounce like in Greenland and stuff like that. So I'm sure many places that you go. So these guys look fun. I wasn't even gonna, I don't even know how this came up in my feed, but this is right down my alley. I, I love this geography. Let's let's just jump in. These guys look like I could be friends with them. I'm um, talking about geography. So, and names. Let's do it. Let's do it. This is by, oh, by the way, Jay Foreman. All right. Never heard of him, but I might watch more after this. British place names can be tricky to pronounce. Take this place. Mm -hmm. It looks simple. But what if we told you it was pronounced We'd be lying. It's Grimsby. But other places can be genuinely fiddly for foreigners. And tourists who get Definitely it wrong fiddly. risk being imprisoned or killed. In today's programme, we're going to ask why British place names are so hard to pronounce. Is there an and coming? No, I'm done. Welcome to Map Men. We're the men. And here's the map. Map Men. Map I like them. Men, map men, they even have their own map, theme song. Map, map Men. men. <laughs> I like these guys already. There are difficult to pronounce place names all over the world. California mm. has Zizix. Slovenia has Ptudge. Greenland has Kirk. Yeah, Zizix I've, I drive past all the time. It's, it's, I don't know, I guess two hours south, I think, of Death Valley. Still extremely hot. Zizix. Even Welsh natives struggle with this one. And tonight, we can expect to see heavy showers spreading from the west into Wales. But deliberately hard to pronounce <laughs> well, names invented for promotional purposes, uh, like Shanvai, Puchwin, Gukko, Gerechwin, Drobo, Klantisilo, Gogo, Gok aside, show off. British place names cause more trouble than most, because they often wow. look straightforward, but contain nonsensical phonetic traps that are impossible to predict. Try this one. How long, how, how much practice would you need to say what that guy just said? That was incredible. That was, it's impressive. Hard to pronounce names invented for promotional purposes, like Shanvai, Puchwin, Gukko, Gerechwin, Drobo, Klantisilo, Gogo, Gok aside. Show off. British That's place crazy. names cause more trouble than most. Try this one. Go on, say it out loud, in your room or on your train. I know I'm gonna butcher this, this is why they put it on the video, but it just looks like from. You have the Rom, you have an F in the beginning, from. But I'm sure there's some weird, uh, weird dialect for this. Ha 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 ha! Wrong, it's not from. F R O M E, it should be blitheringly obvious, is pronounced froom. And if you did say from, don't worry, you're in good company. Froom is officially the most mispronounced place name in Britain. And that's froom. according to a proper survey. Don't they need Excuse two me, O's for that? you mispronounce froom for me? Portsmouth. That'll do. <laughs> There's nothing more fun than Done. laughing at tourists who don't know how to say something properly simply because they're from a different country and could never reasonably be expected to have predicted a local pronunciation that contradicts the basic rules of language. So Dang. we've created the perfect travel agent's itinerary for maximizing tourist humiliation across the country. Starting in Bialio, oh, beauty. head over to Rampisham, Ransom. then down to Mousehole. Mousehole. Next, travel north up to Towcester. Toaster. Then a quick jaunt to Gotham. Gotham. Followed by a stop Gotham. in Quernmore. Quorma. Before finishing up in Alnwick. Annick, which is near Newcastle. Or, as the people from the city itself say, right. Newcastle. When will they learn? I as got you can Newcastle. Hear, no letter of the English alphabet is safe from being pronounced any of dozens of different ways. Including not at all. Thankfully, there are some general rules you can stick to. And because we're nice, we'll help the un-British amongst you through a couple of basics. Sester is pronounced stir. Leicester, Worcester, Gloucester. W at the start of the final syllable is silent. Norwich, Berwick, Southwark. ER is pronounced R. Berkshire, R. Clerkenwell, Hertfordshire. But before you get too reassured, for every rule in the English language, there are always exceptions, such as the Sester in yeah. Siren Sester, the W in Sandwich, and the ER sound in Oh, this is disgusting. Oh, sorry, Berkhamstead. Which is in Hertfordshire. The only way to be absolutely sure of pronouncing British place names correctly is to live here long enough to learn every single one of them one at a time. <laughs> sorry. So who Seems were like the it. complete anchors that invented these rules? It's time for an English lesson. 
All right. To make an English language, you start with the base of Germanic Anglo-Saxon. Mix in a healthy dash of Old Norse, a huge Lamb. dollop of Norman French, and just a Lamb. fairly detectable hint of Celtic. Trust me, it'll make all the difference. Stir it up for hundreds of years until the vowels really start to shift, and then... English. That seems kind of correct, and I guess Latin's the root of, you know, many languages, so that's where you... And that's pretty interesting. I had a, a professor that was new. I don't know how much of Latin he knew, but a good amount, so he would just, you know, you could just start putting different sections of words together and roughly know what you're talking about, or exactly know. It's It's... Impressive, so. Excitingly, by looking at a map of Britain today, we can clearly see which invaders influenced our language where by plotting the origins of British place names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this marvellous, messy, multicoloured map shows which languages different British place names belong to. And okay. Cornish, Welsh, Gaelic, Old Norse. Let's see, let's see. I'm going to go back real quick. Anglo-Saxon. Yeah, Old Norse, Gaelic, Welsh, Cornish. I, probably, I don't even know if I said that wrong. But yeah, I remember once again in the previous video that I watched about the county names of 48 county counties and how you say them in just a brief history. It was something like, yeah, Norse was it on the on the east coast or in the east. And then uh, Germanic kind of in like the, I don't know, south southeast-ish or south-ish. A tiny bit of Celtic on the Midwest, I guess. And then Welsh and stuff. So, I mean... That's what that's what makes I feel like the UK in general so interesting. They have such a long, long, long history rich history. <laughs> I said that really weird, but um, yeah, there's so much just like a big mixing pot over thousands of years. And shows this is which what you languages get. different British place names belong to, and is a living history of our early settlers and subsequent invaders. The oldest place names here are of Celtic origin. This is where you'll find uh -huh. all the place names with words like tre, loch, brin, and aber, loch. such as Aberystwyth, loch meaning the mouth, aber, of the river Istwith, which coincidentally is exactly where we find Aberystwyth today. Celtic languages were once spoken all across the British Isles, but are now reduced to a small minority of mountain dwellers. And that's mm -hmm. because low-lying Middle England Brits turned out to be more worse at resisting invading armies. First up were the Romans, who brought in Britain's Latin influences. Like the rumba? No, there like boring Latin. Mm. Anywhere that ends in castor, sester, castor. chester, or xeter was a Roman fort, from the Latin word castra, meaning Roman fort. But the Romans didn't stay long, cool. so although their naming system was long-lasting, the actual names they used weren't, which is perhaps unsurprising when we learn they used names like Castra Exploratorum and Belgic Oppidum, which were sensibly renamed Braintree. Next, in light perfect, pink, we have the perfect, biggest group, Braintree. Germanic Anglo-Saxon. Any place containing the words Ham, Hurst, Lee, Berry, Ford, Port, Mere, Stead, Tunstow, Wick, Witch or Mere are of good old Anglo-Saxon origin and massively dominate Southern England. Like Buckingham. Yeah. Or a low-lying area of land belonging to an Anglo-Saxon called Bucker. Perhaps the most upheavaling See, thing that cool. happened to Britain's place names was the Vikings, who swept in from Scandinavia mm -hmm. in the 9th century, committing brutal crimes including rape, pillage and the renaming of small to medium-sized settlements. You can tell a place was named by the Vikings if it ends in Thwaite, Thorpe, Kirk or B. Such as our old friend Grimsby. Named after an important Viking called Grim, famed for his infectious positive energy, Grimsby literally means Grim's village. Really? Nailed it. We're all familiar with these common settlement suffixes, but what's so striking is how clearly this map of Viking place names reflects the extent of the Viking invasions. You can practically see the exact location of the Danelaw dividing Viking and Anglo-Saxon England without needing to draw it on with thick red pen. Following all these invasions, Britain was littered yeah. with place names that originated in different languages and accents. But the final thing that would make its place names truly unpronounceable was time. Over hundreds of years, locals who were too busy to pronounce all the syllables in Sester reduced it to stir to save time. But they couldn't read or write, so the spelling stayed the same. And while the English language has continued to gradually evolve, our place names haven't, resulting in a language landscape littered with phonetic... Yeah, see, that's crazy to me. That is wild to me. I mean, living in in the UK, can you pronounce just generally, you just like they said, growing up in the UK, can you pronounce all of these or like the mass majority of them? That's pretty wild. I mean, we here in California, we have a lot of like Spanish influence, a lot of Spanish roads and everything. So we get that. But I know other places around the US, you know, of course, you're going to have German areas and, and a lot more Irish and stuff like that, but English. But um, 
you get like this big mix and here it's a lot of southern and i feel like i'm fairly good at um or spanish not southern in southern california that little mix but these are crazy like there there's from which is a room right there from lid lid lied i'm gonna butcher all these i'm just gonna look sandwich you probably say that differently too booby traps but what about from which linguistic group Froome. is responsible for Britain's so-called hardest place name? Yeah, that Usually for a doesn't... place name in England, Froome is from a surviving Celtic word, Frama, which means fair, fine, or brisk, probably describing the flow of its lovely river. It's not really it's surprising really that the oldest language in these islands is the one that's drifted the furthest from pronounceability. So don't forget to join us for the next episode of Matt Men. Is that the end of your sentence? Yeah, I'm done. Golly darn toot gee whiz, hot diggity woo! Ooh, what here we go. Doing? I'm putting on an American accent to fool my computer into thinking I'm in America. yippee ki wee buckaroo! Why are you doing that? Because I want to watch all my favourite programmes on Netflix. But you've already got Netflix. Yes, but American Netflix has programmes that we don't get on UK Netflix, including, curiously, some British programmes. So that's why I'm doing this really convincing accent so that my computer will let me access all the content I want. zippity doo dad, gosh darn it, yee-haw! Suit yourself. Yeah, they definitely... I know this is completely off topic, but when I was in um, in London, they definitely had quite a bit. Di their Netflix there. We logged onto their, their Netflix, and it was quite a bit different than our Netflix here. The shows and what you could watch was was quite off. So that's pretty cool. But let's get uh, back to the video. Wow, the map that say these guys are good. I, I like maps. I, I like geography. I've even you know before I go to some countries, I'll go on Google Maps and just kind of drive around the cities or where we'll be and just kind of get familiar with certain places. Other places, I kind of just want to be odd and surprised, I guess. But I definitely, definitely love maps. I love Google Earth, stuff like that. So that was a good video. Very entertaining. And I learned a lot. I mean, that one map showing, let's see, let's see, let's see. This kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It shows so much just in their history of just their map name. Yeah, I want to know how just growing up here or around here in the UK, can you name all of these or most of them? Because like they said, it seems tricky even if you were to live there. It's a big place and a lot of different influences from different countries over, you know, hundreds or thousands of years. And I would assume it, it's still hard to kind of get all of these. And they all have their own little unique... Um, ways of saying them and the rules and everything. So that, that's my question to you, just living in the UK. Can you just read this and just kind of nail all of them, nail most of them? Or if it is like, yeah, it's hard and I will screw up on some of these. So I want to know that, how, how easy or hard um, this is for you. Now comments. Pronouncing English names is easy. Pronounce the words, wow. Pronounce the word like you think it is pronounced, then repeat it faster and faster until you've swallowed three syllables. That's the actual pronunciation. Is that accurate? Could be, could be. This is basically adult horrible histories and I'm not complaining. Here we go. Programmers, ransomware. People from England, ransomware. Ransomware. It seems pretty accurate. Can't wait in 2200 people will just say, can you hand me the whir sauce? As an American, I was having trouble understanding the video, but after that yippee ki -yay, I get it now. Thank you, Matt Min, for great translations. Yes. Had a really good laugh at 125. Ha 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 ha. What's 125? Survey. Excuse me, could you mispronounce Froom for me? Portsmouth. That'll do. <laughs> That'll do. There's nothing that's more so funny. fun yeah, than yeah. that. Yeah, so that, that's mainly my question. How much of this can you pronounce? Is it hard for you? Is that kind of just like a normal thing? It's just like, yeah, it's just wherever you go, it's, you might mess it up. Even living there your whole life or just, just in the UK in general, just let me know anything else you can. Because those names, when I see them, are pretty crazy. I don't even know what percent I would get if I had to actually pronounce them. Um, and that's why I kind of avoid pronouncing a lot of these things like uh, Froom or Froom. So, so that, that whole thing is like, it looks so simple, but it's not. 
it's definitely there's a twist to it so so let me lo know about that and um i'm gonna check these guys out it is a very very good video very entertaining check them out jay foreman mattman and i'll catch you guys next video i'm gonna roughly learn some names here so see you next time and uh have a good rest of your day